I was told that this was a First Communion Mass. <laughs> no First Communions. <laughs> but I do want to say this about that. John F. Kennedy used to say that. Let me tell you this about that. <laughs> we need to pray for those families. It says in, the, in our intentions at times, do we pray for the children who are receiving First Communion? We need to pray for the families of the children who are receiving First Communion. Right now, we are in um, interviews with our confirmation students. And our confirmation students tell us, most of them, tell us that they have not been to church since their First Communion. That means they have not gone to a Second Communion. That means that their parents are not going to church. In the confirmation, Bishop Hennessy now does not do confirmation at a mass because the parents come up to communion. It's a sacrilegious communion if they haven't been going to church. So he's cut out the mass for confirmation. And yet these young people are left on their own, as it were. Now, I know a lot of parents, grandparents, come to me and tell me that their children don't go to church. Sometimes I ask the grandparents, were you going to church when they were growing up? And they say, no. Well, how can you expect them to be practicing Catholics? The fact is that when you were baptized, you were baptized into the sheepfold, the house of God. It's an identity. Just as you have an identity by being born of your mother and father, you have an identity at baptism that you are a Catholic. Now you have two choices. You can be a live Catholic or a dead Catholic. But you can't be a non-Catholic. And so you have now this identity, and we hope and pray always that you, through prayer, through reading, through your daily life, integrate that identity into everything that you do. That you are Catholic through and through, and people would recognize you. I think the terrible thing that was, was said about one of our funerals, the next door neighbor of the deceased said, I never knew he was a Catholic. Don't let that be said by you or for you. It's your identity, our identity, that we belong to the household of God. So I ask you to pray for our First Communion families and our Confirmation families. I somehow suspect after, what am I, 60 years in priesthood, 61 years, that religion isn't possible until 35 after we get through our adolescence. Then we begin to look for the meaning of our life. And sometimes we find no meaning except through Christ. That we are here for the glory of God and for the establishment of a community of God's people, the flock of his sheepfold. Yes, we need to pray for our families and for these two groups, First Communion and Confirmation. Without prayer, nothing happens. But with prayer, everything is possible.